So, hey, we're excited to have you here uh, this morning at Curtis Lake. If you're our guest today, let me introduce myself. And so it's nice to see you. And, no, just kidding. I forgot to introduce myself there. My name is Ryan. I'm the lead pastor here at Curtis Lake. And it really is great to have you here with us this morning. And uh, just hope that you experience God in a really neat way, maybe a unique way, but his presence. And uh, you just know that. Because that's really what changes us. It's not music. It's not a sermon. It's, it's really God's presence. And so that's what I pray you experience today. And I believe you're here for a reason. But there's one reason you're not here for today if you're our guest or if you're kind of uh, new to Curtis Lake. If you're... If if you're here today, you're here for all kinds of reasons, but one reason is not this, and that's the pledge card, okay? So um, today is the day, one day out of the year, where we all come together, and it's kind of the culmination of our week spent asking God, okay, what do you have for our family? What should our family be giving to Global Outreach this year? And so here's how Global Outreach works. We have a team of volunteers called the Global Outreach Team, and they work all year long going through applications for support, uh, communicating with uh, missionaries that we support, national pastors that we support, global outreach partners, local outreach partners, hearing what's happening. And so they work together. They put together a proposal of people uh, that they think are great for our congregation to support. And so this huge process goes on. They plan Global Outreach Week all for this moment so that you and I can make an informed decision about how we invest our resources into taking the gospel into our world outside, you know, just Curtis Lake Church. And so here's the scoop. All of your pledge money, all of my pledge money, all that we give to this, you need to know 100% of it goes to make global outreach happen here at Curtis Lake. And so every penny that goes through Global Outreach is marked for Global Outreach. It goes to support the, camp, the national pastors, the organizations here in town that we support, the Global Outreach partners, the missionaries. It goes to support them. It goes to make Global Outreach happen because we bring in all of our guests. We fly them in. We pay for their expenses. We bless them. We were able to take them down to the duck tours on Friday. And uh, so our missionaries got to do a duck tour on Friday. And it was a lot of fun to bless their families. And so um, you just need to understand that, that when when, when you and I give to Global Outreach, we're not, you know, giving to my salary. We're not giving to uh, the lights. We're not giving to the youth ministry here. We're not giving to Unthinkable. We're not giving to Trunk or Treat. A hundred percent of it goes specifically to making happen Global Outreach, that brochure that you've been getting. And if you didn't get a Global Outreach brochure, please grab one on your way out. We have uh, some extras. We want to make sure everybody has that. It's a great prayer book for you to be praying for a different person every week uh, throughout the year. So do me a favor. Have your pledge card. Grab it. I just want to walk through with you real quick so there's no confusion as to how this works. Because many of us are, are currently giving our pledges and have made a pledge for 2014. And this is really the pledge for 2015. And you say, but Ryan, 2015 isn't until like three months from now, four months from now. I get that. But this is the time of year where we talk about it. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do is just to fill out this left side uh, on your pledge card, which is your name, all that information. Um, believe it or not, if you're in our system, like if, you, if you're in our database and you get our emails and everything, thing. Uh, we probably have all your mailing address, but it's good to just know we have it correctly. So if you take a minute during uh, our worship service, fill that out, that'd be great. And now on the right side, let me just walk you real quickly through how this works. Um, so what we'd ask is for every person here at Curtis Lake to make a global outreach pledge, which means a weekly gift, a monthly gift, or an annual gift. And this, the theology behind this for our theology people that want to know, well, where in the Bible do you get this idea about giving beyond the tithe, giving beyond your regular offering? Well, uh, we get this because Paul, the Apostle Paul, when he set up churches all around the Mediterranean, um, he went back to those churches at a time where the church in Jerusalem was suffering. And, and in many of his letters, he's talking about this collection that he's gathering from the churches to help the church in Jerusalem, to help the gospel there, because it was a very difficult time. And Paul says, you know, every person should set aside an amount each week to give and bring it and give it and give with a chill for heart. And he says, and when I come back to you, we'll receive. Or when he would send ambassadors to churches and they would receive that offering and then they would go and deliver it to the church in Jerusalem. And so we take that as a model for us for global outreach. And so um, all, of, all of our regular tenors, members, we encourage and teach on tithing and offerings. But this is really about helping the gospel in places around the world that really need the help, that we can 
be the hands and feet of God, that we can reach to the least of these, that we can take the whole gospel, um, not just the gospel that's spoken, but also the gospel that's shown in love. And so that's where we get that from. And then once you make that decision, hopefully you've been talking about it, praying about it with your family. If you haven't, uh, it's okay. At the, in, the, in just a few minutes um, after our speaker, we're going to have a few moments to just reflect and kind of pray. And you and your spouse, you could do like one of those negotiations. You ever seen those in the movies where he says, I'm going to write a number down down. And you can slide it over to your spouse across the pew and they can look at it. They can write a number back. You know, you could just negotiate during that song if that's what you want to do. I just think that'd be funny to just look out and see people write, mm, that's a really bad number. Don't you really think of this, this one? Oh, right across the yeah. Um, So you you write that down, and then it says, please choose one of the following. I am increasing my current pledge for the rest of this year, continuing into the year 2015. This is always the goal of my family. Uh, We haven't been able to do that every year, but that's always our goal is to say, well, how at this time of the year can we increase our pledge to finish out the year strong and then carry that pledge into 2015? So if that's you, if you're a current uh, Global Outreach partner, uh, that's kind of my hope and prayer that you're in a situation where you can do that. Second one says, I will finish out my pledge for 2014, and the above is my new or renewed pledge. Pledge for 2015. So you're cruising along, you got your pledge going, you love it, uh, and, and just want to finish that out for the year. And then in 2015, you've got a new pledge. That's the above up there. We'll make sure that that gets uh, put correctly in the system. And it says, I'll restart my pledge for 2014 and carry it into 2015. Now, listen, this is the heartbeat. Like, how many of you know life happens? Raise your hand up nice and high. You say, Life happens. Like, sometimes jobs are lost. Sometimes you take cut in pay. Sometimes you have medical bills. Sometimes you have expenses that come up. You have kids, and they, they drain your resources. You know, So you might have, in 2014, last year, or 2013, uh, at, during this week, made a, a pledge. And you said, I'm going to give this much as God puts into my life. And, and circumstances just came about. And you weren't able to fulfill that pledge. But now maybe things have changed, and you can jump back in, finish out the year strong. That's what we want to encourage you to do. It, there's no condemnation in Christ. That's the cool thing about this. This is a, a matter of faith. It's a matter of joy joy, uh, giving and being generous and knowing you're a part of this great stuff around the world. And then my favorite one is the last one there. This is I'm making a new pledge. Believe it or not, that's my favorite box that gets checked um, because that tells me that, that God's working in somebody's heart. And that's what's so cool to know that there are new people partnering with others in the pews to do this incredible work around the world. And so if you're kind of new to Curtis Lake and this is your first Global Outreach Week and this is the first you're hearing about pledges, I hope this will be a year that you say, you know what, Lord, we're going to jump in and be a part of it. And and what's important is that, is that we're all participating. Please don't get caught up in the amount. That's the last thing we want to happen. That's not God. That's not who God is. Um, God established a pattern of percentage giving for obedient giving. And generosity is a matter of blessing in our lives. And we should give proportionally to that. And, and that's, that's the key, that everybody participates. Great story in the Bible of the woman who gave everything she had, which is basically two little pennies. And Jesus said, you know, I tell you the truth, she's given more than everybody else because she gave out of what she didn't have, and she gave it all. And so the amount doesn't matter. What matters is that we're all participating, and we're all using our time, talents, and treasure to be a part of God's incredible story. So do me a favor. Please don't get caught up in that, you know, and just trust that, hey, what God's called you to do, he's called you to do, and that's for you, and that's how you honor him, and that's how you're a part of it. I mean, you know what, there are some who God has blessed uh, uh, with a certain amount, and some who God has blessed with a different amount. And that's okay. We're all part of this huge, great, big family, the body of Christ. And so uh, that's just, again, I'm going to say it one more time because it's really important to me. Please don't get caught up in the amount. That doesn't matter. It's the heart. It's participating. Well, I have a treat for you today. Um, This morning, our guest speaker is uh, all the way from Romania, Pastor Marian. uh, I've met Pastor Marian 12 years ago. I think it was on my first trip to Romania. And since then, I have been learning from him. And I feel like for the past 12 years, Pastor Marion has mentored me in understanding what it means to live a life of faith, live a life on the edge, live a life of trusting God to provide, uh, of thinking bigger, of dreaming bigger than I could imagine. And, uh, you know, here's the scoop. I'm kind of protective of who speaks here because we believe God has called us to be a certain type of church and there's certain type of people that come here. And, um, and so we, we don't have many outsiders share here. We really don't, but this is a, an outsider who's really an insider, and uh, I, I, I think you're going to enjoy it. And his topic today, he is an expert on, and you are going to love it. But before he comes up, I want you to watch a little video about an organization that uh, Pastor Marion started called Value Plus. 
One thing about Pastor Marion that you won't ever hear him tell you, you won't talk about, is this. He is not leaving Romania. Everybody's leaving Romania. Everybody's looking for financial wealth. They're looking for more opportunity. They're looking for an easier way. And so they're heading out into Europe because Romania became part of the European Union. Pastor Marion has had offers to come and pastor churches in the United States. And he could have done that, but he didn't because he loves Romania. And he loves Romania enough to give up the, even the, the comfort of pastoring a church to say, you know what, I need to go start churches. We've got to get the gospel out there. We've got to be serving more people. And he got a burden for the kids in his uh, community who were the most at risk, whose parents were off in Europe or who didn't have parents. And so he wanted to start an organization that would help them understand their value as they are, created by God, but then also bring the values of the Christian faith into the public school systems. And so uh, we worked with him. He created Value Plus, which is an incredible nonprofit that's beginning and it's gaining traction. More and more communities are wanting Value Plus to come and start programs. And so this is just a little taste of what they do. And then please, please, please give a big welcome to Pastor Marion when he comes up here. You're going to love it. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is, has been such a great week, marvelous, amazing. Hardly can imagine what kind of week we had here. Lots of people, a lot of food, good food, a lot of testimonies. It's a lot of cool stuff, a lot of food. <laughs> we had an amazing time. Yesterday, we drove to Boston and take the doctor, doctor, and the driver says, one potatoes, two potatoes, three potatoes, and every one of us from the doctor said, walk, walk. What a great week. <laughs> Did I mention food? <laughs> I just want to say thank you to all of the volunteers and everyone who stood behind the scenes and put this everything together. Big thank you on behalf of my family. I am here with my wife and three children. And on behalf of the ministry in Romania, we just want to uh, tell you that we have seen everything. We really appreciated your warm welcome and your arms open wide open. And uh, thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. God bless Curtis Lake and all the people who are really involved in this. Thank you. You made us to feel such a part of the family. And I heard Pastor uh, Ryan talking about me. Uh, this is the third service. Uh, by the way, uh, this is the last one, so I can speak as much as I can, right? No, I'm just kidding. Um, using so big words and fancy words to describe me, I felt humble. You know, I said, God, forgive him. <laughs> and forgive me because I, li I like it, you know. Uh, but the, the truth is that we have been blessed much more by you guys than we were a blessing to, the, uh, to Pastor Ryan or to you. You really impact us and blessed us because every time when we see you and we've seen a kind of the culture that we want to create in Romania. And thank you for allowing us to be part of this. Such an amazing work, Curtis Lake Church from Sanford, Maine. Check that out. Up in Maine, the coolest place on earth. I love it. Love it, love it. Um, I was waiting for Pastor Ryan to be up with me on the stage. When he came to Romania, I translate for him. So when I came to the stage to speak, I was expecting he would translate it for me. So I will speak fast. I'll try to speak fast at least. Uh, and if I twist any word or misspell or mispronounce any word, just bear with me. Because if not, I can switch it to Romanian language and then we are all going to be lost. So I'm here to share with you something that is on my heart. And I, I'm, I get excited every time I got to share this. And uh, the message today is about how you can build your own story with God. How a story begins. How you can build your own memories with God. And everything this past week revolve around this kind of a theme. 
that everybody has a story, everyone has a testimony, and we were so amazed to hear each other and um, the, the way people come up on the stage and tell the stories from Philippines, from France, uh, from Nicaragua, and uh, it was really amazing. And to have those stories, those landmarks in your life when God really show up and work, that is amazing. That is great. And I just want to share with you this message, which is short and simple. How about that? right? Short and simple. I like that. About how, how we all can build memories with God, how we all can have that kind of experiences. And the main idea of this message, and yes, I have an agenda, I have a purpose, I would love if you can remember this idea after the service is over. And um, it's not complicated. I will just say it. And uh, my purpose is that everyone will uh, will kind of remember in the next weeks, months, years, after years, after years. And the idea is this. Faith that leads to obedience will set the stage for God to move in our lives. The faith that leads to obedience set the stage for God to move in our lives. And I will say it one more time. Faith that leads to obedience set the stage for God to move in our lives. You can remember that one day a crazy Romania came to Curtis Lake and said that. But it works. Every time when we have faith and we put faith together with obedience, it sets the stage for God to intervene. It set the stage for God to show up and really do miracles and great works. And we can live and be witnesses of those kind of moments that we would love to tell our kids. We would love to share it with friends. Maybe when we sit with them and say, hey, there was a time when, and then you go on. Those kind of moments that you really want to leave like a legacy for the next generation and for your families. Those kind of moments that will be a landmark in your life when you put together faith and obedience. It's like putting together gas and matches. And when you take gas and when you take matches and put it together, it's go boom. Don't do that when you get home. We all know what happens when we take gas and matches and put it together. But if we put faith and obedience together, it will set the stage for God to move in our life. A great Bible passage that I want to share with you is from the book of Daniel, Old Testament, chapter 3. There were three young people, three prisoners of wars, Jewish they were brought to Babylon, and um, the king in one day had a crazy idea. He said, let's build an idol, a golden figure. We will put it in a Dura Valley, and uh, then we will ask the music musicians to come. We, they will play, and at a certain point of time, everybody has to bow down and worship the idol. So they set the stage. They put the idol in the middle of the valley. They ask everyone to come. Musicians came. They start to sing. And at one point of time, everybody bowed down. Except for these three people. They stood still. Unmovable. They did not move. They did not yield to the pressure. Everybody saw them. And he drew attention to the king. So the king, probably the king loved them. Because uh, probably the king saw a lot of potential in, in, in them. Uh, probably they were, I'm sure they were very handsome and bright. And, you know, the king said, well, I'm going to give them another chance, a brand new chance. So he said, hey, he, this is what we go. We, this is what we will do. We will go again through the process. The musicians will start to sing again. Everyone will kind of do uh, the same thing. And when the time will, will come, you will bow down. But they said, listen, we want to tell you something, the king, they said. We will not bow down and we will not worship to the idol. 
Because the God we serve is much more bigger and strong, and He is able to rescue us from your hand. But then they continue, and they said, and even if He doesn't, we will still not worship the idol. That's obedience. Now the king got nervous, furious. He said, put the furnace, overheat the furnace seven times more. And he took the young people and threw them in the furnace. The people who throw them in the furnace, they got burned. These guys had nothing. They were inside the furnace. They were taking a walk, you know. I'm sure it was a breeze, cold breeze in the furnace. They were just enjoying the breeze. The king looked and he said, didn't we throw three people in the furnace? I've seen four. And the last one, the fourth one, it's special. His face is glowing. His face is like the face of a son of a God. He was God. And in the midst of the problem, in the midst of the challenge, in the midst of the storm, God was their present. God is always present. God never let His children alone to walk for the valley of shadows. God is always present. Faith and obedience take to set the stage for God to come and move. Short, what is faith? It's not rocket science. Faith is simple. Just trust God and be ready for action. Noah trust God and build the ark. Abraham trust God, left his country for a better country. What is faith? Faith is simple. Trusting God. The Almighty God we worship and we serve. The Almighty God we discovered in the Holy Bible. The Almighty God that created everything, just trusting Him. That means faith. Trust and be ready for action. What is obedience? It's simple. It's just sub submitting your will to the will of God. Submitting your life to the will of God. And you trust God, and you submit God, and God is show up. God is going to show up and work. Daniel had an interdiction to pray. He kept to be obedient, and he went on with his prayers. Peter had an interdiction to preach the gospel in the New Testament. What, he, what the apostle says, they said, shouldn't we, should we listen and obey the, man, the people, the, the men, or we should obey God? And they went on and preached the gospel and praised God because... Because of that, the gospel reached us. When we trust and obey, I'm going to say it one more time. We set the stage for God to move in our life. The most valuable legacy we can build with our life and the best way to live our life with no regrets is to have the courage to trust and obey, to live a life of faith, and when we do this, stories like a personal experience with God, lives changed by the power of God, will happen. And we will see God on the move in our life and through our life. How a story, how an experience with God began, just trust and obey. I'm going to share with you a story, uh, my own story, one of my own stories of trusting and obeying God. And in 1993, me and my cousin, during the summer we had this idea, we said, let's go to Turkey, the country of Turkey, to Istanbul, and let's work there, win some money that will pay for the school supplies and for clothes in the autumn and everything so we can go to school. So we together, full of hope and full of uh, enthusiasm, 
said, okay, we will go, it's going to be fine, we'll just take the bus down to Istanbul and we will find a job. Uh, they pay like, usually they pay like $10 a day. By the way, that was a very good pay for a Romanian standpoint of view at that time. And lunch, and we said, we will be really fine with that. We will get some money and we will come back, we will have enough resources to buy the supplies that we need for the winter. So let's go. So we took a one-way ticket, got on the bus from Bucharest. And uh, next day we were in Istanbul, Turkey, looking for work. We got off the bus in the Balkan Bazaar. We were full of hope and uh, we we're just starting to look for work. Um, we found a hotel. They host us in the roof of the hotel for a very cheap rate, $5 a night. Check that out. It was the roof of a hotel anyway. But we had a place to stay. And we start to look for work. We looked the first day, nothing happened. We found nothing. We looked the second day, nothing happened. We found nothing. We looked the third day, nothing happened. Fourth day, fifth day. When we reached the fifth day, the loaf of bread all was already gone. <laughs> we eat it little by little, but it was gone. We had a place near the Marmara shore, Marmara Sea, where we went and pray every morning and have our devotion. It was a very nice place among the rocks. And we, we prayed. I said, God, when we were in Romania, when I was in Romania, I was preaching from your word. I quote verses that you listen prayers. When we pray, God is listening and he's making a way. Now we are here in Istanbul. We really could use some help. Heaven, this is earth. Hello. I don't know if you ever cross any kind of situations like that when just looks like your prayer doesn't go beyond the ceiling, you know. It's just, God, where are you? Went back on the city and work, look for work. Nothing happened. Making this story short, in the eighth day, something happened. After we finish our prayer and on our walk back to the streets to look for work, we found a piece of salami floating in the water. Boy, I tell you, it was so tempted. It looked so good for us at that time. Or maybe we, our visual was not very clear. So we stop, we take that piece of salami, we rip it in two, and we were kind of a, should we eat? Shouldn't we eat? It's like, you know, Shakespeare, to be or not to be? Should we or should we not? But at one point we said, we made a crucial decision. We said, the children of God will not beg and will not eat from garbage. That will be very low in our self-esteem to go very low. If we are your ch children's Lord, we want you to help us and interfere and listen. So we went back on the street. Guess what? Nothing happened. Next day, we went back to our prayer meetings place. We were so weak, we said, this is it. We cannot go forward. So we kind of lean shoulders to each other. Me and my cousin, we were a little dizzy, a little more dizzy. Start to walk through the Aksaray Boulevard and hoping something will happen. But when we start to walk out from the crowd, you know, a lot of shops like in Istanbul, there was craziness in the street. A little man came to us and he said, are you Romanians? And I said, yes. He said, uh, do you have work? We sa I said, we're looking for. And we made the promise, we will not beg, we will not tell anybody anything. And he said, okay, good luck. So he left, but before he left, he put his hand in my pocket and leave. I never see him before, I never saw him after that. I put my hand in the bucket, I pull it out, it was two dollars bill. Two dollars. You have no idea how much it was for us, those two dollars. Like two million dollars. 
one dollar was worth of six loaves of bread. So, I don't know if you ever experienced, but we experienced so much joy. We were speechless. We couldn't speak anything. We were just staring to each other, took the money, went to the corner of the street at one bakery there. We bought a loaf of, loaf of bread, ripped it in two, started to eat half me, half my husband, my, hus my uh, cousin. I told you about the English language, right? My cousin... And we start eating that uh, loaf of bread and just staring to each other and crying. While we were eating, a man came and he said, are you Romanians? I said, yes. He said, I have a blue jeans shop and I'm looking for somebody to come and working in my blue jeans shop because I have a lot of Romanians who come and buy clothes and we did not know how to uh, speak with them. So he said, pay $10 and lunch. Sure. Absolutely. So my cousin take the, take the job, and I was, you know, just jubilating and jumping outside of his shop window and just thanking God and eating what was left from my piece of bread. And a man came to me. He said, are you a Romanian? I said, yes. He said, you know what? I have a sweet shop. Sell chocolate and gum, bub bubble gum. And I have a lot of Romanians who come in buy sweets, and I need somebody to work in my shop to negotiate with them because I don't know the language. I said, yes, yes, book me. In five minutes, God come up on the stage, come, come on the stage. In five minutes, we found jobs, we had food, and everything taking care of it. In five minutes, I went outside of my shop, my cousin went up outside of his shop, door. We were looking to each other, and we shout as much as we could. How great and big is our God. He may let you go for a while through trials and storms, but if we have faith and trust, and we obey and submit to His will, He will show up on the stage of our life, and He will move because faith and obedience will set the stage for God to move. It's like gasoline and matches. When you put them together, boom. Those are great stories, and that story really kept me into the ministry. I always go back to that experience. It's like a landmark in my life. I know when I pray, God is answering and is listening. I know when I pray, God listens. After we started the church in Tergogna, we had, uh, we had the opportunity to buy a building. At one point of time, we decided as a church we need to move in a building. We found out a building on this, uh, in the city, and we said, okay, we, that's the right building. We pray about it. We fast. We got together with the church board. We said, yes. So we did not have all the money, so we made the step of faith. So I said to the owner, if we put a 10% deposit, deposit from the price of the building, and within six months we will give you the rest of it, can you accept the offer? And if we will not come in six months with the rest of the money, you will get the deposit. We lose the deposit, basically. He said, yes, that's a good deal. So we made the papers. And I was full of hope that it's going to come the rest of the money. We had um, a pastor, a friend of us, um, Pastor um, Ryan knows him very well, Pastor George Ray from North Reading, from Massachusetts here, his church. They said, if you can come to the States, we can pull a, a mission banquet, and whatever will be raised, we will put it in the building. And I was all excited, and I thought it's going to be okay. So, you know, half of the faith in God and half of the faith in North Reading, Massachusetts, uh, we pledged to the building to, to buy the building. And when the invitation came for me to go to the embassy to get the visa, the embassy even didn't look at me. They said, no, you are not qualified for the visa. I called the pastor. I said, they reject me. Oh, don't worry. I'm going to send you another invitation. You go ba back and apply again. So in two weeks, I'm back again at the embassy. Apply again. They even don't look, look to me, don't talk to me. They said, no, you're not qualified. Rejected. 
There was a lady I met in the embassy. She was running an orphanage. Uh, she was an American lady. She was running an orphanage in Bucharest. She said, what are you doing here? I said, I'm trying to get to the States. She said, don't worry. You will come tomorrow with me. I'm going to pay again for your uh, visa uh, tax, and uh, I will write your recommendation, and I will be with you. I said, God, thank you for this, Angel, you know. And next day, I am back in the embassy. They even d didn't look to me. They just dismissed my request and banned me six months to go in the embassy. Put the stamp on my passport. They said, six months, no more applying for visa from you, sir. Now I got, I got in trouble. You know, God was cutting the half of not reading from my faith off. So I got back, started to pray. I know I'm, I, was, I was really in, the, in between. And a lot of pressure starts to build up. A lot of people in the town say, oh, you heard about that young, inexperienced pastor. Uh, they put 10% from that building. They're going to lose the money, and it's the church money. They sacrificed a lot. But I prayed. I said, God, you listen to my prayers. One time when I prayed in Istanbul, and you really came on the stage and worked, you can do it again. And guess what? In a few weeks, I got a phone from the embassy. They called me back up uh, down to Bucharest for an interview. They grant me one month visa. Making the story short, I just flew, took the airplane, flew to the States, speak at the mission banquet. Raised, they raised uh, $23,000, the exactly amount we needed, that we have needed. The pastor, after a week, took the money, flew back to Romania on the 30th of November. It was the last day for us to lose the deposit and to close in the papers. The 30th of November was the last day when we took the owner to the notary and closed the paper and paid the bill. Right at the last day. <laughs> I had an experience with God before. It was like an anchor. It was like a landmark. It was like something for me to turn in hard times and say, God, you've been for me there one time. You can be there again. And I just want to encourage you with this. Build memories with God. Build your own experience with God. God wants you for a purpose here in Sanford, in Wells, in the surrounding areas, wherever you are, in your workplace, church, home. God has a special plan for you. Build your own experiences with God. And it's easy. You just have to trust and obey. Trust and submit. Because when we trust and submit, we set the stage for God to move in our life. Short challenge, and I will close. First, please take some time this week. Ten minutes, five minutes, three minutes, twenty minutes, whatever. Take some time this week when you work, when you're at home, when you're driving. But if you pray when you're driving, don't close your eyes. Just take some time this week and please pray and ask God, what is God's plan for your life? What God has envisioned for you personally in a unique way? Discover God's dream for you. And I fully trust that God is going to speak to you. God is going to communicate to you this in a unique way. You will understand and you will take it. It's going to be great. His plans, His vision for our life is really amazing. It's the kind of life that we can live with no regrets and live fully. Take some time and ask God, God, what is your plan? For? I know my plans. Oh, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to build this career, I want to get that job, I want to go there, I want to succeed there, I want to get that house, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want But stop and say, God, what do you want from me? Maybe God will tell you, I, I want you in a mission work. I want you in the ministry. I want you to be a witness at your workplace. Whatever God will tell you, it's going to be great. But take some time and ask God, what is your plan for my life? And second, are you willing? Are you willing to submit and obey God's plan, God's will for your life? 
Are you willing to submit your will to God's will? And if you do that, it's like gasoline and matches. You'll build your own story with God. May God bless you. God bless you. You've been great people. And thank you again for your warm and beautiful welcome. God bless you all.